family welcome to the spiritual counseling tv network thank you for becoming a member and having access to this therapy session today today's therapy session is going to be about pendulation and titration now what is that is what we're going to discover today make sure that you watch also this week's motivational speech on how to let go of victimhood because these tools that we're about to learn today in this therapy session are going to help us to let go of this victimhood mentality so that we can step into this new life, this new phase on our journey, clear and high vibrational. That's the whole purpose behind my Spiritual Counseling TV network. Make sure that you're also watching your daily morning spiritual guidance video. I promise you that it's no more than three to five minutes and it's so worth it because those three minutes really help you to start your day on a positive mindset. And also my mini podcast morning show which is an audio of one minute and those four minute total of the morning is my ritual in the morning and i listen to them diligently because i do record them ahead of time and they completely resonate with whatever i needed to hear that day and i'm so grateful that i have that message so i want to share that with you please take a look at it give it a chance and let me know how it goes for you so let us get started with today okay so today's gonna be a little bit of a long topic so make sure that you're comfortable have your notebook as always make sure that you screenshot the hand sheets that i will be attaching to this video and make sure that you also read the newsletter for the educational portion of this so that you can read you can also read it and watch the video at the same time if that helps you out okay so let us get started and yes these newsletters are also available in two other languages in spanish and in french okay so that is it for today let's get started okay so it's very early morning this today i like to do these actually very early in the morning i feel like i'm more clear thoughted so maybe that would help you as well to listen to these early in the morning when you're clear-headed and you're basically very awoke okay and your morning routine obviously has all to do with that and that's something that I talk very deeply in my body, mind, and spirit health and wellness website. I give tips on how to have a healthier lifestyle that's more balanced. So let us focus on our mental and emotional health today. So pendulation and titration. Somatic experiencing developed by psychologist and trauma expert Dr. Peter Levine, which we have been definitely having a lot of research here named by him, focus on which he's one of the most top trauma experts so that you know, focuses on helping clients become aware of and release any tension trapped in the body after trauma. And that's where victimhood mentality comes into play, right? Because if there's any trauma in our life, it's directly correlated with victimhood. When you experience a trauma, you basically label yourself as being a victim of that trauma, right? But we don't want that story to replay over and over in our lives. Eventually, it's gonna get old. So eventually, we need to switch the tape and create a new one create one of empowerment one of confidence and that's the kind of energy that i want to help you to embody so this tension is largely responsible for the autonomic dysregulation which is increased stress response basically seen in traumatized clients somatic experiencing is a complex and multifaceted approach to trauma treatment and includes several important concepts two of which are Pendulation and titration, which Levine talks about. Pendulation and titration are methods that we're going to learn that can be utilized in conjunction with the techniques that we've learned that help to magnify the brain changing potential of those exercises. Now, make sure that you also watch my Mindset Talk playlist on my YouTube channel, which will be premiering very soon within the next few weeks. And this is going to get deeper into educating you about the different brain parts and how they all correlate together and how they all play a role in trauma recovery okay so make sure that you do watch that so subscribe to my free youtube channel so let us define what is pendulation now pendulation for the purposes of this session is defined as the intentional shifting between emotional regulation and dysregulation we want, to emo we want to be able to regulate our emotions, right? That's called emotional intelligence, which is chapter 10 of my A New Utomic Intensive Soul Coaching Program. I get very deep into that chapter. 
or it can also mean amygdala deactivation and activation which remember that amygdala is that part of the brain that rules our fear center and we want to deactivate it because when your fear center is activated this basically means that everything that just triggers any sort of memory from that trauma is going to create a fight or flight response within your body and that creates a lot of stress and anxiety and we can't live like that healthily right we can't always keep our nervous system on high alert because that will be just too much cortisol hormone for your body and eventually it will break down so to train clients how to re-regulate re because we need to teach you how to redo this and stabilize themselves when they become dysregulated which is called emotional intelligence being able to manage our emotions in difficult situations when confronted now pendulation can be thought of as a type of brain training in which the clinician facilitates a slight activation of the client's amygdala which is the fear brain usually with an emotion induction exercise and then helps the client deactivate this brain area utilizing bottom-up or top-down techniques which we have been learning right like the movement-based techniques or the mindfulness techniques when the amygdala is activated the client will experience physical manifestations of the stress response this is when it's too late already such as faster breathing increased heart rate muscle tension and other sensations which are all key points in like anxiety disorders now the clinician helps the client reverse the stress response by utilizing the client's resources defined as any skills, practices, or thoughts that can help the client rebalance their autonomic nervous system and deactivate the amygdala, which is the fear center. The result of this training is improved emotion regulation and resilience, being able to handle things when life brings you challenges, being able to get back up, like I said in my motivational speech, and keep moving forward in your life. Don't let that deter you or stop you from achieving your best self. Now, what is titration? Let us define this. The definition of titrate is to continuously measure and adjust the balance of a physiological function or a drug dosage. This is according to the Oxford Dictionary. Now, in this context, titration refers to the slow incremental activation of a client's amygdala, which is the fear center, and stress response for the purpose of training the client to manage and reduce that activation it is critical to incorporate titration when pendulating a client's amygdala since overactivation of the amygdala leads to feelings of overwhelm a lack of control and dissociation this in turn often reinforces avoidance behaviors which exacerbates post-trauma symptoms so a common example of a pendulation without sufficient titration is when a clinician asks a client to dive into the details of a traumatic event too soon and basically they're not ready right to revisit that event and it becomes stressful so they basically close off again right they avoid it because it's just too much to handle so we want to get to this point where we're ready to revisit that situation from a more non-biased standpoint okay with more open-minded compassion and being able to see through analytical eyes okay to retell the story re-narrate re-narrate what happened now when titration is sufficient a clients are able to slowly engage with traumatic memories or uncomfortable sensations in the body without becoming overwhelmed while memories or sensations may be unpleasant they are not unbearable you see so however, when titration is not used and the client is encouraged to engage with traumatic memories or any accompanying sensations associated with those memories too soon, the client's amygdala may activate too much, making it impossible for them to manage their stress response. And this is because the amygdala activation shuts down the cortical thinking center, which is our prefrontal cortex of the brain. This is a frightening and out of control feeling that for some clients resembles the feeling of being traumatized. Again, it's like reliving that experience. And since trauma occurs when something terrible and too much happens without a person's consent. So it's basically out of their, out of their barriers or out of their boundaries, right? 
So without a sense of control, there can be a feeling of re-traumatization that leads to increased avoidance of trauma. Reminders because of thoughts and feelings related to the trauma feel dangerous and unmanageable. So if you're not ready to confront these fears or traumas, you can even get re-traumatized is what it's saying. So it's very important to have a higher perspective when revisiting these memories because eventually it needs to be done, right? It's only doing you a disservice by avoiding it and just denying it for the rest of your life because that's not really living free. So when teaching clients the techniques, it's recommended that pendulation and titration be used at moderation, right, in tandem only. So let us talk about the brain on pendulation and titration. Integrating pendulation and titration in trauma treatment approaches can change the brain in at least four key ways, all of which will help the clients reduce and better manage post-trauma symptoms. So two bottom-up re-regulation after pendulation is number one, when it comes to the fear center, in the, which is the amygdala, initial slight increased activation of this fear center during pendulation. But after pendulation, the bottom-up techniques can be practiced in order to deactivate the amygdala. Eventually, this can lead to greater regulation of and a sense of control over the amygdala. Number two, the interoception center, which is the insula. Normalized insula activation, but during, during pendulation, the client feels into the body and notices physical sensations. In PTSD, the insula is often dysregulated. When it is overactivated, there is emotional reactivity and outburst. Emotion under modulation, when it is underactivated, and there is dissociation and numbing. Both extremes are very common in PTSD. With a more regulated insula, individuals improve their interoception and they experience fewer emotional outbursts and dissociative symptoms, including numbing. Now, two top down re regulation after pendulation. Number three is the thinking center, which rules the which is the prefrontal cortex. Initial slight decreased activation of the thinking center during pendulation due to activation of the amygdala. After pendulation, top down techniques can be practiced to activate and strengthen the prefrontal cortex. Increased activation of the thinking center of the brain leads to improved attention and concentration, self-awareness, ventromedial prefrontal cortex, and awareness of others, the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. And then number four, self-regulation center, which is the cingulate. Initial slight decreased activation of the self-regulation center during pendulation due to activation of the amygdala. After pendulation, top-down techniques can be practiced to activate and strengthen the cingulate, resulting in improved self-regulation, including both thought and emotion regulation and decision-making. So there is a lot of improvement in these four key ways that happen in the brain. So now we're going to get to the tools, the tools to help us in recover from this trauma, letting go of this victimhood mentality. So the number one tool, so take a look at the hand sheet and screenshot it, is going to be the distress thermometer. Okay, so I'm gonna to explain to you how this works. This is a self-monitoring tool that you can use to basically monitor the level of your anger to manage it, okay? Because yes, traumas can cause anger or it can cause anxiety. Either or, they are a direct result from any fear from the past, right? So the distress thermometer is a tool often used in anger management and anxiety protocols. It can be extremely useful in trauma treatment as well. Since traumatized clients distress can become so overwhelming that it's difficult to think or function well, right? Which helps you become more productive when you're able to let go of any emotions that are standing in the way. So it is recommended that the distress thermometer worksheet be completed before beginning any pendulation emotion induction exercise. While the distress thermometer can represent any specific emotion such as anger, sadness, fear, etc. 
in this workbook it is presented simply as distress because they're all an emotion that caused distress so we're just labeling them all into this big category of distress now the clinician can modify this to be more specific if desired if, obviously if we're in a one-on-one -on -one session but for the purposes of this for this tool today let us put them all in the same category now this distress thermometer is similar to the fear hierarchies commonly used in anxiety treatments in which the clinician helps the client identify situations places people memories etc that are distressing to varying degrees however unlike the fear hierarchies of anxiety treatments the goal is not to have the client identify distressing situations to prepare them for later exposure to those situations rather the objective of the distress thermometer is to help clients build self-awareness noticing how it feels to be distressed and to identify levels of distress that cause feelings of overwhelm. The points at which distress becomes overwhelming are referred to as clients boiling and freezing points, right? That's when it's just too much to handle. Now, these are the points at which the fear center, which is the amygdala, let us label these so that you can know what I'm talking about when I say the word amygdala, fear center, fires so intensely that it hijacks the thinking center, which is the prefrontal cortex causing the client to dissociate, fight, flee, or freeze, okay? So to help clients complete this distress thermometer, let us do the following. Number one, explain the purpose of the distress thermometer. So let me explain to you what it is. Before moving forward, I would like us to spend some time discussing the distress thermometer. The point of completing this worksheet is to identify things, people, situations, etc that you find to be distressing in order to become more aware of how distress manifests in your body and your mind. I will not try to make you do any of the things that we discuss. Rather, this is just for you to better understand how you experience distress. The benefit of this exercise will be an improved self-awareness of how you experience distress, even at a subtle level. Once you are aware of even low-level distress in your body and mind, you can intervene earlier to manage that stress response so that it does not overwhelm you. Number two, I'm going to explain to you how the distress thermometer works. The distress thermometer goes from zero to 100, so that's your scaling, where zero stands for total relaxation and no distress at all, and 100 stands for the most distress possible. You can see that the numbers appear in increments of 10. I want you with my help to identify situations, people, places, or even memories that you would categorize as distressing at these different levels. You will write these examples to the right of the thermometer. It's okay if total relaxation is not something you prefer. We're not measuring what feels good or bad. Rather, we are identifying what feels distressing versus relaxing, okay? so. Begin also now by identifying a stressor that you, the client, rates as 100, okay, as a comparison. Next, we're going to identify a situation, place, or person that is not distressing at all, so a score of zero on the thermometer. These are the client's upper and lower limits, okay, so highlight that. Keep in mind that a client's lower limit, which represents total relaxation, may not actually feel good or safe to the client some clients will not like the feeling of relaxation because maybe they've gotten used to being stressed all the time right and this newness can feel uncomfortable because it's different but it doesn't mean that it's bad so this is okay and how to work with this is explained later in another tool so after identifying examples of the client's upper and lower limits help the clients identify a situation that falls roughly in the 50 range and from there, fill in the other number ranges as well as possible. Ideally, the client will be able to identify situations that fall at nearly every increment of the 10 on the thermometer. So this is a, a diagram of what this thermometer is going to look like. You can either draw it out, or like I said, you can screenshot it and fill it in. So you should have one for each level, as you see. And your task in therapy is always gonna be to get to this place. Anything that is not zero 
your goal is to make it a zero eventually it's not going to trigger you it's not going to cause any phobias you're going to be able to live live your life in peace harmony and absolutely liberated from all of these traumas okay so that's how this works let us get to the next tool and this is where i'm going to just here talk to members only thank you for all of you who have watched the sample portion please become a member so that you can get all of these tools for free very much on a monthly basis that i do these and you have so much education it's the equivalent of one therapy session so i'm giving this offer to you because i know how many people can benefit worldwide from these services so i'm wishing you an amazing a beautiful day namaste so now let us get to tool number two 